Welcome to Subtext and Discourse, a podcast which takes you behind the scenes of the art world with the unique individuals involved in the field. My name's Michael Dooney, director of Jarvis Dooney Gallery and host of the show. In today's episode, I'm speaking with photography agent, collector and gallerist Nada Van Veer. I caught up with Nada during the opening week of Recontras Arles in 2022, recording a conversation after breakfast on the third day of the festival. Photography is a core part of Nada's life, and we discuss the various ways she became so passionate about this medium. Be sure to follow Subtext and Discourse Art World Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts, leave a review, and share the podcast with your friends. Now, without further ado, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Nada Van Veer. So first of all, Nada, thank you very much for meeting with me this morning. This is really great to see you again in Arles. I was looking over what you've done, and I suppose with your agency, with your gallery, with your collection, with your kind of activities in the world of photography, like it would be fair to say that you kind of live and breathe photography and it's your passion. 24-7. Yeah, like what ignited this kind of... Well, I, I was quite young, went into Amsterdam shopping and I saw the images of um, the photographer Guy Boudin just in a window, an advertisement, but I was so intrigued by it. And uh, from then on, I tried to study in a direction to see if I could get into that kind of imagery. Yeah. And um, so I did a fashion university, learning the marketing side of it. Through that, I started my own advertising agency specialized in fashion clients. And through that, I met a lot of photographers. Yeah. And when I met these photographers, then it became extra clear that I had to go in that direction. Yeah. So I started to be an agent. And what period was this? 87, 88. So this is kind of like the supermodel era. Like that was a really yeah. exciting time. Yeah, it was. And photography itself or the art form of photography was, I think, still in the beginning. I mean, it was only classic work, uh, mostly black and white, uh, landscape, female nude, mm-hmm. uh, stills, but actually not not really a lot of conceptual art. But I met all these photographers and they did their own autonomous work. And then I started buying from them. And so I actually had some photos hanging on my wall, but not really conscious in a way. And then people were visiting my home and they said, oh, you have a nice collection. And I said, collection? (laughs) Collection? I thought there were just a few pictures on the wall. And then it hit me that perhaps I had to do something more with it. And so, yeah, I started looking seriously into photography. So that's that's when I really started collecting and next to being an agent and yeah. But I didn't always have the money. Yeah, of course. To buy yeah. prints. <laughs> and uh, so then I bought the book. Yeah. And that's <laughs> Got wrong. <laughs> oh, so, you collected a lot of books as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've now on yeah huge library of specialized photo books. Yeah, so that's really nice. We have that now the library in the gallery, and it's a nice place to sit with people or with clients and go through it. And I learned how the gallery world was working and mm. what they did to uh, do sales and. Yeah, I was intrigued by that. And then after 25 years being an agent, I needed to do something else. I thought, well, you can do different things. Mm -hmm. So the idea came up to start a gallery. And so Jasper and me made a plan. Jasper sat with us just for people listening. (laughs) How did you meet? How did you both meet? Well, that's fine. It's an... (laughs) Oh, God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, it's an interesting story. Um... He's my stepson. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, already for 30 years. And Jasper also was a, an agent. So we both have the same knowledge of photography and also coming from that era, 88, 89. So together we, we know a, lo- a lot about that photography and growing into it. And so 10 years ago, it was for us a nice idea to start together. Yeah, and was it maybe seeing a lot of work through the agency, but then, how can I word this, 
I know for me as a gallerist that I see work that's incredible, but in the context of a gallery, I can't do anything with it. And if I was an agent, I'd be like, okay, there's some really great assignments you can do, or we can work on these different projects. Was the reverse of that true for you, maybe wanting to do a gallery because you would discover certain things that weren't necessarily applicable in the commercial context, but in the fine art world, it's like, yes, this is something that people need to see. Yes. People always tell me, Narda has uh, three hard drives in her <laughs> head. <laughs> Uh, one for the commercial photography and one for the gallery and then my own personal collection. So, yeah, I'm really good in deciding this is for that and this is for, yeah. Yeah. Is there much of an overlap? No, maybe not with your own well, collection. Well, no. In the, in the, when we start the gallery, we, we, we really were very strict in that this was the art photography. So not people who are also busy in a commercial way. But nowadays you see a lot of huge photographers in the art world who have also assignments in the commercial world. So yeah. nowadays it's quite normal to do both. So now it's perhaps a bit less strict, but we try to live with it in a way of really choosing for art photography. Yeah. Well, if you think about a specific Dutch photographer that I've always admired is Erwin Olaf. And he yes. had a very specific commercial career. And then he had his fine art career. Exactly. And I remember going to a talk of his in Berlin. And I think it was only until he was in his 50s, he said, now I can just focus on doing my art. I don't need to do the commercial projects anymore. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that, yeah, photographers sometimes need to also have multiple hard drives and focus on different expressions of their work. Do you coach some of the people you work with? or? Yeah, I meet a lot of young people and a lot of students. I do immensely a lot of portfolio reviews, also going to academies and talk with these people. Yeah, and also in the agency and also in the gallery, we talk with young people to help them Yeah, further. I think that's quite important to do, to share your knowledge and, uh, and help them. Yeah. Seeing as Jasper is here, and we're talking a bit, a bit about the gallery, so the Ravestein Gallery, when was it founded? Almost 10 years ago. Almost 10 years ago, wow. So in September, we uh, we are officially 10 years. Oh, congratulations. And uh, we're putting up a new show. We have this concept, uh, one of a kind. So we asked all our artists who worked with us in these 10 years to come up with one piece, a unique piece. And yeah, we're very excited with that. Uh, oh, idea. wow. And how many artists will that be? Like 20. Yeah, 20, 30. 30 artists. Yeah. Nice. And so they're all making editions of one for yeah. the show. Yeah. Well, we, we see now that, as we mentioned before, that the conceptual art photography brings also things like that you can make unique works. Mm -hmm. So like we work with Patrick Waterhouse who makes unique works. And we actually like that a lot about this new... Uh... Like the new generation of artists? Yes. Because I've found that as well, actually. There is more artists that are working with photography that tend to be a bit more multidisciplined now, where they'll have elements of sculpture. I mean, we have a few people now that also shoot a lot of video and they're not limiting themselves to, I'm a photographer making photographs, like I'm an artist and that's kind of one of my tools exactly that I do to yeah to make things so yeah indeed so we have also artists who come up with uh, and photography and ceramics and all these kind of things yeah and ceramic as well yeah 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 with the curation of the gallery do you always agree on what you're selecting yeah you do? always always wow yeah well that's also why it works out very well we think we have almost the same taste we test it sometimes, so we go to a fair and then I take that way and Jasper <laughs> take the other way. And then at the end, we come together and we ask each other, well, what do you thought was great or new or interesting? And actually, we come up with the same things. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Was it like that at the start or did you think it kind of grew together with what also, you like? Also, yeah, we grew together and I, I mean, yeah, and I, as I said we, we come from the same era of photography so you grow in the same direction yeah i was wondering about taste because i know from my own experience and you've obviously seen a lot more images than i have 
like my experience of photography up until starting the gallery and then like the increase of image consumption through the career choice, what I would have liked 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and even starting the gallery isn't necessarily what I like now. And like a lot of my taste has evolved through that. I think I have it does with if you read certain things, movies that you watch, music that you listen to. How has it been for you since the early 90s up until now? Are there certain things that you're like, no, I will always love this. This is amazing. And things that perhaps you didn't expect to like that now you really appreciate? Uh, well, when I started in the photography, as I already mentioned, Photography was at that point a craft. So it was the landscape, the female nude, the usual suspects, black and white. And well, we grow with this photography. And now you see that photography is really an art form and it's much more conceptual. Yeah. And so after looking all these years to the normal photography, you're also, yeah, you evolve, you're done with it. So yeah. now we see also in the gallery that we are much more in the art form of photography than anything else. Yeah. So, yeah, you evolve and your taste is changing and growing. If we speak a little bit about your collection, you started with collecting nude portraits. And whenever artists show me work that has faces and portraiture in it, I always say, this is really hard to sell. It is. That's what you buy. You enjoy the works of faces and having people and bodies. For you, when you see an artist that's showing that kind of work, do you think, okay, this is going to be more difficult for me as a gallerist to sell, but as a collector, think, oh, I really no, like this, I, I or not really necessarily? No, I really split that up. I, I'm, I'm never thinking, uh, as I said, about yeah. the hard drives. I can really yeah. think about my own collection and mm. what I like and what we have for the gallery. So that's never a problem. Yeah. Do you find that's the case, though? Like what you like isn't necessarily – I mean, everybody has their own individual tastes, don't they? Yeah. Sometimes I was interested in other works, but now I stick to the theme of the mostly female nude. And I think that makes it also interesting now because I have a lot of work and yeah. Yeah, together it's a yeah, nice collection now. Because your life is so consumed by photography, like with your work and your passion for collecting it as well, what do you do when you're not thinking about photography? Or do you ever not think about photography? Well, sure. I mean, I'll... Otherwise, you get uh, crazy, I think. But no, I love uh, movies. Uh, I love to read. Uh, I follow a lot of news. I'm really worried about what happens on the, in this world now. And uh, so, yeah, I get into that. But also, I, I've been for five years in the advisory board of World Press. And World Press handles about the really serious uh, conflicts of these worlds. Yeah. So then again, you're... Also into these kind of things, how to be, um, how, how to show what's happening in this world with photography. Yeah, because it's quite a separate world really to like when we're talking about fashion and art and collecting. Like I went to the 160 years of Red Cross yesterday to yeah. look at that exhibition. And it's, I mean, obviously it's really tragic and really sad seeing a lot of the works, but it's also... Like when you see that, you think this is 160 years worth of struggle and conflict. And yes. like for me, I, it was really hard to look at it because particularly in light of what's been happening recently, when is it going to improve or is it going to ever change? I don't think so. If, it's, if we have leaders or we choose leaders like we have now, it's going to get worse. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm worried about that. I mean, that's also what's happening now. I mean... 30 years ago, photography was not as quickly on the subject because traveling and all the, and there was no digital world. But now you see if there is a conflict, you see it in 10 minutes after it happened. You, you, you see it on your phone and in newspapers. So yeah. that changed too. Yeah, I thought that also in the context of the exhibition yesterday is that because of the time it took to see an image, there was a filter. So the photographers had to travel there. They had to carry all their film, they had to get it developed, they had to bring it back. Editors exactly. had to review it. It was then screened before it was published in the paper. And then like the right image, let's say in air quotes, was selected for this is the message that we want to portray. And I think you make a good point with the accessibility of digital photography now, and particularly that we have cameras attached to our phones and people in the areas where things are happening are documenting what's happening as it is taking place in real time. And yes. so we're 
perhaps we're seeing, well, we are really, we're seeing a new era of conflict imagery that hasn't gone through the same, uh, like, vetting process as what it did in the past. Yes. Uh, but also we have sometimes projects like that in our gallery. Like we yeah. handled a project with Mathieu Asselin, which in, lives here in Arles and has very interesting projects. Like, and we did the Monsanto project, what also. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's we been that. one of my favorite exhibitions. Like for, I mean, that's like my top five. It's, that was an incredible exhibition. Yeah. And it's a very important subject. And, uh, well, he, he was very good next to uh, Sergio, his curator, to come up with a beautiful uh, exhibition plan. And uh, we showed that work. And I think these kind of signs are also important to do. Yeah, I think I've also witnessed that coming to places like Arles and seeing that there is definitely a lot more, let's say, activism photography, where people are kind of lending from journalism, not in the sense that you have a journalist and you have other people going into the field and reporting and then they take photographers with them to document it, but that certain individuals are incorporating that into their practice. Yes. So they're taking a either scientific, journalistic or objective lens to what they're doing and then kind of extracting that in a way that is maybe not favourable to being in a book, but it maybe it kind of borrows from the fine art Yes, it, 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 it's, it's a very important story and it's beautiful presented so more people can look into it then it's not only a horrible story yeah. to see but it's beautifully done and with a very strong storyline yeah. yeah i think that's important for how many years have you been coming to all 10 15 years yeah something? yeah yeah for a long time now and in the beginning it was much more informal flip-flops, uh, lots of rosé. And, uh, well, you you see now that the town is much more into the industry. Well, I think even for myself, I think I've only been coming about five years, but each year I've seen like a bit more of the Luma being completed. So, yeah, it's good to finally see it finished. Yeah, well, I, I understand that this village grows from what the Luma Foundation does for the town. So that's positive, but it makes it uh, more a commercial uh, venue now. And uh, you see a lot of serious collectors who were never here. Really? They weren't? And they're walking around now. And you see a lot of committees from museums uh, walking around with all their contributors and so yeah it's a different uh wow that's really interesting so before it was definitely a lot more casual and do you think as well maybe it's because photography has been more adopted by the contemporary art world yeah and therefore uh, it has more relevance to them yeah also i mean 30 years ago photography was also when you wanted to buy it was not that expensive and now you see that photography and certainly art photography is just as expensive as, uh, as the normal art. Yeah. When I started, photography was not that expensive. So I've got an Helmut Newton, but I'm not able to buy an Helmut Newton now. Oh, right. So in like at the time, that kind of photography was a lot more affordable. Exactly. And now it's, for me, not possible anymore. Yeah. So I'm only looking to new and young photographers to buy. And I can do that because I'm into the industry, so I've, I'm knowledgeable about what the trends and who are good or not good or yeah. are going to be picked up. And these are the things I tend to buy. Maybe also then with coming to Al over years and years, do you see it also as a kind of must-attend event? Because I know when I very first opened my gallery and I got to know other gallerists in Berlin, one of the first things they said to me after they knew I was showing photography was, oh, well, I guess I'll see you in Arles. And I'd never heard of it before. No, it's really actually a small group of people who are coming here, the real photo professionals. And 10, 15 years ago when we started to come here, we also needed it to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, for we had to get into this world and, and learning new names and new photography, etc., now, for us, it's less, how do you say that? It's not that we see now shows and we think, oh, these are names we never heard of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we know these people and it's wonderful to see uh, a beautiful exhibition and, uh, and how they put energy into it. I mean, it's good because they have a nice mixture, I think, of 
legacy work, let's say, yeah. and new work. And new work, yeah. And I think it's good because people that have never been before and they haven't really had the exposure to photography, they've probably never seen a big collection of, say, like a William Eggleston show or they haven't seen the Robert Frank retrospective or anything like that. Like for them, they're seeing that for the first time. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of the nice things about the festival is that you do have a good mix of contemporary, new, unseen work. Yeah, and I, I think a lot like now is, is uh, photography from Africa very important, but that's mm. already a trend, what was set in here in Arla five years ago, six years ago. Mm. That's also important that you see trends coming up and it will be picked up by curators who also see these shows. Yeah, well, the collectors I know that have travelled to Arles for years, also the, the reason that they come is because they say you're seeing what will be big in a few years' time. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it, it, yeah, it gives a trend. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, thanks for taking the time out. It was really good to see you again. Yes. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the week here. Where are you off to next? I've been asked to be portfolio reviewer <laughs> in uh, Cortona. Oh, cool. Uh, the Cortona on the Move, which is a big photo festival in Italy. So that's in another week. First, I go back to Amsterdam and then to uh, yeah. Italy. Another photo festival. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to that. Well, enjoy the rest of the week. Have a good summer. Thank you so much. You Until too. Until next time. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Nada Van Veer and hearing the different ways that photography makes up her life. You can visit the Ravestein Gallery at Vestadoc 824 in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Otherwise, the gallery regularly participates in major photography-centric art fairs such as Parifoto, Unseen Amsterdam, and this year at APAD in New York. As always, I've included a comprehensive collection of links in the show notes to the various people and places that were mentioned during the conversation. If I missed anything, or if you have any questions about this or previous episodes, you are more than welcome to get in touch. Subtext and Discourse Art World Podcast is streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every major podcast platform. If you enjoyed this episode and know someone else who would appreciate it too, please send them a link so they can benefit from the insights. That's all for now. Thanks again for tuning in. My name is Michael Dooney, and you've been listening to Subtext and Discourse.